Hello YouTube. In this video, I'm going to discuss this case in Alabama. It's concerning a young lady, Erica D. Ramis is her name, and she was barred from her senior prom, and she was suspended because of some dress she wore to the prom, and it, the dress which violated the school dress code. Apparently the dress was not cut low enough, and the top part of the dress, it revealed too much of her breast area. Now I've seen pictures of the dress since this story it made the news so I've seen the pictures of her wearing the dress and I don't think it's over, overly revealing I think it's a very pretty dress and it looks very good on her I, I have no problem with somebody like her wearing a dress like that now I do know that there are some schools that, impl that have these really strict dress codes I went to such a high school myself and that if a student wears a dress or any other kind of article of clothing that does not comply with the dress code, then it does not comply. End of story. Now, should schools use such dress codes? And if a dress code is used, should it also apply to non-academic school activities such as senior proms? Well, there's some debate regarding that. However, that is another issue, and it is not what I will be discussing on this video. Instead, I am going to be discussing about how Erica de Ramis is being punished, along with some 17 other students who also violated dress code at prom. Now, Miss de Ramis, she was given the choice to either be paddled or suspended, and she chose to be suspended. Now, paddling, from what I do know about it, that's where they take you someplace, you're called to the principal's office and they'll usually have you bend over a desk and then they'll hit you on the rear end with a wooden paddle. They might hit you three, four, five, however many times. And paddling, or corporal punishment as it's often called, dates back to colonial days before the US came to be. This was when this land was being ruled over by England and children were switched in school sometimes back in those days. And the uh, practices still exist to this very day. Supposedly there are some 20 plus states in this country that still do allow corporal punishment. Most of these states are down south, such as you know Alabama, which is deep south. And for what I know about it, Alabama is perhaps one of the worst states to use corporal punishment, along with the state of Texas. Now, when Miss DeRamis, when she refused the paddling, what she had to say about was that as a high school senior, she was way too old to be paddled, and that this is not the 40s, that this is 2010, and that such a practice should have gone out a long time ago. And I have to say I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, she must be, what, 17? For goodness sake, that, that, that's way too old to be paddled. I'm talking teenagers here, that's disgusting. Besides, uh, what teenager would let somebody paddle them, you know? I don't see a teenager letting even their parents, let alone school, paddle them. After all, you know, I did once read this book. It was actually a book that was addressed to parents. It's about dealing with teenagers once your children become teenagers. And what this book said, this was actually really quite obvious. I didn't need to read the book to know this, but what the book points out is that the only way you can truly control a teenager is that it is to physically control them. You know, that's how it is with your with the smaller children. For instance, a two-year-old little toddler goes to stick their tongue in a light socket. What do you do? Well, a good parent would go and pick the child up and tell them, no, we don't do that. And you see, that way, you're physically stopping the child from sticking their tongue in the socket. So, you know, and that same concept, that same principle is true with teenagers. Let's say you've got a teenager and their parents ground them. All that teenager has to do is just physically walk out the door anyway. You know, uh, the only way that the parents could stop the teenager is to physically stop them. And that's usually not an option at that point. After all, you don't have that same size advantage that you do with a two-year-old. Uh, teenagers are, are, are much larger than two-year-olds. Uh, a teenager might be just as big as you, if not bigger. So you might not physically be able to control a teenager. And as the book states, that 
if a teenager wants to con completely violate their parents' rules, they can. They've got that power. Now, I'm not advocating that you just go break all the rules and, and do whatever you want. But as far as being paddled, what teenager would let somebody paddle them, even their parents? I mean, I know that younger children sometimes might be spanked by their parents. You know, they might be spanked with a open hand or a switch or even a belt. Maybe you're seven, eight year old, but a teenager, I don't see how a teenager would let even their parents do that to them, let alone a school. It's, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, teenagers have got a right to their bodies. It's, it's disgusting. I mean, especially at that point in life, you know. Even if a state does allow corporal punishment by law, I don't see how it would allow it in high school at that point. I mean, I could see how it might allow corporal punishment with elementary school students. Not that I agree with that. I don't think any school or any student should be paddled. You know, this isn't colonial days after all. But a teenager in high school, that's when you've got those raging hormones and, you know, your body's going through all sorts of changes. And, uh, even if it's allowed at the state level, I don't see how, like, federal law would allow such stuff. And, uh, you know, that that's spanking and paddling that's used in pornography. You've got porn videos that feature young ladies ages 18 to 25, give or take a few years, being spanked and being hit with paddle, switches, riding crops, whatever. And there's guys that watch that stuff and then they get off on that. So you take your 16-year-old high, 16, 17-year-old high school student and you paddle them. You're doing the same thing to that student that you'd that you'd see in a porn video. It, it's disgusting. I don't see how a state could allow something like that, especially with you know with female students. You know that's hitting a girl. That kind of stuff that's going to get you thrown in jail. You know. Now there's this one woman who. Uh, she calls herself Patty, and she claims to be a former high school teacher, and she actually approved of the paddling in this case. She said that more schools should paddle, and that you need discipline in order to teach. Yeah, well, not with high school teenagers. Patty, what have you been smoking? Where's your brain? You really think a high school teenager would let somebody paddle them? I mean... Let's face it, let's say, uh, you know, which, which really baffles me is how all these 17 other students, aside from Erica D. Ramis, they're all choosing to be paddled. I, I don't see, I can't imagine them letting anybody, any administrator paddle them. After all, even if they do choose to be paddled, when they actually go to the office to get the paddling, the principal might say, all right, bend over the desk, I'm going to paddle you. The student could just say, no and not do it and refuse to cooperate and then what could the principal do i mean we're talking big high school teenagers the principal's probably not going to be able to physically do it and the student's not cooperating so then what i mean that's <laughs> what you're going to have in a case like that or the student might not even go to the office you know you have a teacher say to a high school student go to the office you're going to get paddled that student could just not even show up at the office, could just, you know, walk away from the school campus. And then what? You know? So, I really don't see how th it's possible to, to paddle people that age. And, uh, as for you, Miss Erica DeRamis, I'd just like to say that you've made the right choice. You've got respect for your body, and uh, I really respect you for your choice. The world needs more teenagers like you. You, you set a really good example. Don't let people violate you. Don't let the school violate your body. It's your body. You have a right to it. You know, I just like to say, hats off to you, Miss Ramus. And for the rest, for all the other teenagers out there, she, she really does set a good example. You, you, you shouldn't let people violate you like that. It's just plain disgusting. And that's it for this video.